Welcome to Muir Advising and Me. We are looking at transferable credits earned from AP, IB, or A-level exams. From this video, you will be able to one, locate exam credit information using your academic history and the AP, AP IB charts. Two, identify how AP, IB, or A-level credit applies to Muir College GE requirements. And three, identify how to avoid duplication of credit. Note, in this video, the terms units and credits are used interchangeably. UC San Diego recognizes and grants college credit for three exams. Advanced placement exams, also known as AP. International baccalaureate exams, also known as IB. And A-level exams. How do these credits matter? Credits obtained from these exams might be applicable toward elective units. Every student needs a minimum amount of overall units to graduate for university requirements. Mirror general education requirements, placement, or a specific UCSD course. When you were admitted to UC San Diego, ideally you submitted your exam scores as soon as possible to the UC San Diego Office of Admissions. Once scores are received and evaluated, any credit earned is posted onto your academic history in your training link account. For AP exams, this means earning a score of three or higher. Scores of two or below do not qualify for earning credit and are not posted onto your academic history. You can refer to the AP chart to see what your exam score granted you. For IB exams, you can only earn credit from taking higher level exams and a score of five or higher is needed. You can refer to the IB chart to see what your exam score granted you. IB standard level exams do not qualify for earning credit and are not posted. For A-level exams, the UCSD Admissions Office is responsible for receiving these certifications and determining if they are UC transferable for earning credits. Only full A-level exams are granted credit. If your exam is not posted, then it was not UC transferable and not eligible for credit. Unlike AP and IB, there is no standardized A-level chart because these credits are more complex. For AP, IB, and A-level, you wanna make sure that your credits are posted to your academic history. Your academic history can be found on your Try and Link account by going to students.ucsd.edu. Then click on Try and Link Tools and scroll down to Grades and Transcript Tools to access a link to view your academic history. Your academic history is also sometimes referred to as your academic record. It can also serve as your unofficial transcript since it also records all of your UCSD coursework per quarter. This screenshot shows the transfer credit section of an academic history. This is how you can know how many units have been earned for your exam and whether you were granted specific course credit it's always a good idea to review and monitor your academic history for accuracy. If you don't see your, your scores posted, contact UCSD Admissions. A resource to specifically locate AP and IB credit information is through the AP and IB charts. These are published annually by the university and document how AP and IB credits are posted to your academic history. To find these charts, go to the UCSD course catalog at catalog.ucsd.edu. Click on the undergraduate tab on the top menu bar and then select admissions. A web page will pop up that hyperlinks the AP chart and the IB chart. Now let's understand how to read the AP chart. Since this is a university-wide document, it has a lot of information. What you need to know as a Muir College student is the column exam and units for university credit. Here, all the AP exams are listed alphabetically and this column clarifies how many units are earned from that exam based on your score. The column UC San Diego course exemptions. This clarifies whether your exam score also granted you credit for a specific UCSD course or not. This is also referred to as a course approximation or course equivalency. This is important to know 
So that way you avoid duplication of credit. And what that means is if you already earned credit for a course, then you cannot take it here at UC San Diego. You can only earn credit for a course once. And lastly, you need to know the column John Muir College. This clarifies whether your exam and test score is applicable to your Muir GE requirements. Now let's go through some examples. For AP Chemistry, a score of three or higher grants eight units. To count toward Muir GEs, you must also earn course credit. Course credit is granted depending on your score. A score of three or four grants credit for Chemistry 4. Since Chemistry 4 is on our Muir GE list, this counts as one course in our Chemistry, Physics, and in the Environment GE theme. And this means that you need just two more courses in this GE theme to clear your math, uh, natural sciences GE area. Now, if you needed to move forward with chemistry for major or pre-health requirements, then this score has also given you your placement information. Per this score, your appropriate placement into chemistry is enrolling in chemistry 6A. You cannot enroll in chemistry 4 because you already got credit for that class. Now a score of five. This grants credit for chemistry 6A, B, and C. These are three courses that clear an entire mirror math natural science GE theme. Remember, three courses in the same GE theme clear a GE area. Per this score, you cannot take chemistry 6A, 6B, or 6C at UCSD because of duplication of credit. So if you needed to still take one year of chemistry courses for pre-health requirements, you can take the chemistry six honor series at UC San Diego. And that's designated as chemistry 6AH, 6BH, and 6CH. This is an example of how an exam told us how it applies towards Muir GE, how it can grant specific course credit, give placement information, and how to avoid duplication of credit issues. AP US History is a very popular exam that many Muir students come in with. A score of three or higher grants eight units overall. For Muir GEs, it's possible to use these credits. No specific course credit is given, but your score can count as two courses within the Hill 2 series. These courses fit into the historical narratives GE theme for our humanities area. From the AP chart description, um, you can still take Hill 2A, Hill 2B, or Hill 2C if you wish for full credit um, if you want to. There's no duplication issue. For mere GE purposes, this means that your AP US history credit counts as two courses towards the humanities GE theme in historical narratives. To complete this GE area, you would need to take one more course in the historical narratives theme. So any one of the courses listed here from our MIR website. This is an example of how an exam told us how it applies towards, towards specific um, MIR GE themes, even though we don't get credit for a specific course. What if you also have credit for AP European history or AP world history? Um, I see that these can count towards a historical narratives GE theme too. So am I done for humanities for a mirror? No, <laughs> you will earn eight units for each exam, but only one AP exam can apply towards your humanities GE area. To complete a humanities GE area, you need to take one more course from the historical narratives GE theme. Using AP language or AP literature towards the Muir language GE area is another popular choice. This example looks at how you can determine your placement in Spanish from AP credit. For Muir GEs, you can use either exam to count as two courses towards a Muir language GE theme. To complete a GE theme, you must take one more language course that shows progression in that same language. The course exemption column lets you know your placement so you can finish that last course. And if you happen to have taken both exams, 
you will receive credit for each exam, and then your language placement will be the highest placement that was granted to you. So for instance, let's say that you earned a score of four in AP Spanish language, and that you earned a score of four in AP Spanish literature. The score of four on the AP Spanish language exempts you from LTSB 2A and offers you placement into LTSB 2B. The score of four on the AP Spanish literature exam exempts you from LTSP 2B and offers you a placement into LTSP 2C. Since you take the highest placement, then to complete a mere language GE theme in Spanish, you need to take LTSP 2C, just one more language course in Spanish. The last AP exam that we wanna mention is AP Calculus. And there are two different exams, Calculus AB and Calculus BC. Either exam can be applied towards a mere math natural science GE theme. And depending on your score, you can get one or two courses applied to your GE theme. If you are planning on taking more math courses for your major requirements, then your AP Calculus exam can serve as your math placement. So move forward. You need to know if you're pursuing the Math 10 or the Math 20 series. What series of math you take is determined by your major requirements. And if you took both exams, the A, B, and the B, C, pay attention to the exam that grants the highest placement for the math series that you are pursuing. So a score of three in the Calculus A, B exam exempts you from Math 10A. This means if you are pursuing the Math 10 series, take Math 10B. If you are pursuing the Math 20 series, take Math 20A. A score of four or five on the Calculus AB exam exempts you from Math 20A or Math 10A. This means if you are pursuing the Math 10 series, take Math 10B. If you are pursuing the Math 20 series, take Math 20B. A score of three on the Calculus BC exam will exempt you from the Math 20A or Math 10A plus the Math 10B course. So this means if you are pursuing the Math 10 series, take Math 10C. If you are pursuing the Math 20 series, take Math 20B. A score of four or five on the Calculus BC exam will exempt you from Math 20A, 20B or 10A, 10B. This means if you are pursuing the 10 series, take Math 10C. If you are pursuing the Math 20 series, take Math 20C. Aside from the AP chart, you can go to mathtesting.ucsd.edu to learn more about your math placement with either AP, IB, or A-level credit. Now let's understand how to read the IB chart. Surprise! Reading this chart is the same as reading the AP chart. The same columns are listed, but all the information is about IB scores. Again, only higher level IB exams grant college credit. Standard level exams do not. Some students might have earned an IB diploma. The diploma itself grants elective units and is posted onto your academic history next to all your other IB exams that might have granted specific course credit. For the IB chart, we'll still go through some examples to get a feel for it. For IB anthropology, we earn eight units overall, and we can use this credit towards our GEs. And scoring a five or higher gave us credit for anthropology one. Anthropology 1 can count as one course in the mere social science GE theme of culture, society, and social justice. For IB business and management, we earn eight units overall, and there is no GE application, and only elective um, credit is granted. For IB chemistry, we earn eight units overall, it can be applied towards mere GEs. However, your specific score will determine what course credit is earned. A score of five cre grants credit for chemistry 6A only. 
A score of six grants, um, grants you credit for chemistry 6A and 6C only. Uh, so that means that you can take chemistry 6B at UCSD for credit. A score of seven gives you credit for the full chemistry six series, chemistry 6A, 6B, and 6C. Avoid duplication of credit by checking this chart. Let's move on to understanding more about A-level credits. Unlike AP or IB, there's no A-level chart because A-level exams are more complicated. First, your A-level exam must be deemed UC transferable in order for you to gain any credit for it. If you took A-level exams, make sure your official certifying statements of results are sent directly to UC San Diego admissions. That's the office who determines whether your exams are UC transferable and whether credits will be granted for the exams that you took. Now, evaluation can take some time and only full A-level exams are given credit. If you have questions about UC transferability for A-level exams, contact UC San Diego admissions. Second, if you do earn credit, then you may apply this credit towards near GE requirements only if what you took is equivalent to a specific UCSD course and if that course is on our approved GE list. Otherwise, your A-level credits will count as elective credits towards your degree. To get specific course credit for an A-level exam, you need to contact the academic department where you want that credit from. For instance, if you took A-levels in economics, contact the UC San Diego Economics Department. Depending on the exam and the syllabus, you may be granted equivalent credit by the academic department. When you email the department, include a copy of your A-level exam statement of results showing your syllabus code and grade. So that way they can advise you appropriately on any courses through your, a, through your subject A levels. Thanks for stopping by Muir Advising and you. If you have questions, contact Muir College Academic Advising online at the Virtual Advising Center at bac.ucsd.edu. Until next time.